What's up everybody, Gary Simon here. So today we're gonna be checking out, actually for the very first time on this channel, web components. I've never talked about or showed how to use web components. And that's gonna be the purpose of this tutorial specifically. And we're checking out something called Shoelace. All right, so shoelace.style, which is the web URL for this site, uh, is what they call a forward thinking library of web components. All right, so basically what is a, a web component? You may have heard about it before, but it's actually really simple. Uh, it's basically uh, UI components of some sort that you can easily integrate into your project that has both uh, ability to customize these things uh, in terms of the appearance usually, um, and it, it, it includes uh, basically an, an entire encapsulated little element that you can include in your project uh, it has the functionality that you can tie into through events uh, and all this other stuff. And so I'll just show you uh, how to use their library of components right here. So you can see there's like alerts, there's the ability to, to animate these things, um, avatars, just so much. And we're not going to go through every one, just a few of them actually. And I'll show you how you can, you know, really customize the look and feel of all of them uh, through basically a macro perspective, but also at the individual uh, perspective as well uh, in terms of customizing the individual components itself. As you can see, there's something called CSS parts. There's custom CSS custom properties that you can tie into many of them. There's slots, events, properties. I'm going to show you how to essentially work with all of that. And then in the future, I'm going to show you how to make your own web components as well and probably create a crash course, but that's for a different topic for now. Just get your feet wet with what web components are and integrating with this awesome library called Shoelace. So let's get started. Before we begin, this video is sponsored by Linode. Now, as a front-end developer or a designer, you know that you need a personal portfolio. And if you use a website builder like Wix or Squarespace, they lack total customization and they lock you into using their platform. But to be a pro, you need to use the tools that the pros actually use. So level up, start building your own projects and your own portfolio on an enterprise level content management system like WordPress or Drupal. Now, real web development sometimes requires knowledge of spinning up servers, managing domain names, and setting up an occasional staging environment. And there's no better or simpler way to learn the ins and outs of hosting your website than with Linode Cloud Hosting. Linode Cloud Hosting makes it as easy as possible for you to deploy a WordPress or Drupal website in seconds with a free Linode one-click app marketplace. So click on the very top link here in the YouTube description to get your free Linode account along with $20 of free hosting and all the tools that you need to build enterprise class websites. All right, so we're gonna get started here naturally looking at the documentation. And you know, like I said, the, the whole point of this video is, is more to help you guys understand how to use the documentation, which is quite easy, um, more so than just doing some type of real world project. So to get started, the quickest way uh, is going to be to just use the CDN right here. So that means we're gonna be importing this CSS file at the top within the head tags of our HTML document. And then we're going to also take this after pasting that and paste this in a different location in the HTML document. And that's all it, that's, that's required to get it up and running. Now, of course, you may have different options uh, or different, maybe a more robust setup uh, where you're using, uh, you'd use NPM, the Node Package Manager. Um, I'm not gonna show you that process, but again, you know, that's that's up to you in terms of what your requirements are. So we're gonna go back to quick start here and I copy this top line. Now I'm gonna use Visual Studio Code with this. I already have a new uh, folder open called shoe and there's an index.html which has nothing in it. So exclamation point will give us the Emmet abbreviation where we can hit enter and that gives us just our basic HTML boilerplate and we're gonna paste that CSS file right here, all right? After that, we're gonna go back and we're going to choose, or copy rather, this part. And we're gonna put that right here just beneath the closing body tag. That's all we need to do to get it up and running. So now, as the documentation suggests, we can use one of their components, SL button, save it and let's real quickly create our css uh, folder so we're going to go css and we'll call main.css and then also we'll include that css file even though there's nothing in it yet we'll just get that out of the way 
There we go. And also, we're going to open this with live server. That gives us uh, you know, the, the automatic reloading whenever we save something. Um, and if you want to use that, come down here to extensions. Make sure you have the live server extension installed. So let's go ahead, right click, open with live server. And there we go. We have our click me right here. You, as you can see, it's custom styled. Uh, it's not like a default button or whatever. So we know that shoelace is now working and it's integrated. All right. So having said that, we see that uh, the documentation is set up into uh, different areas. We have the Get Started page right here where you can look at usage and customizing and all that. Um, very helpful. Definitely read that. And then all of their components that you can use. And then also something called Design Tokens down here. So the button. Let's just take a look at button, for instance. Um, the way this is set up, they give you a bunch of different options, and this is a, it's a really well set up documentation. I like it a lot. Um, it'll show you an example, and here's the source, and there you go. Extremely simple. Um, if we come on over here, we have different types of buttons. It'll show you that. So along with all these other components, it's going to show you just a lot of different iterations in terms of what they can do, um, and all, along with the source. All right. Now, mainly the source that I've seen for pretty much all of these is just showing you how to apply different properties. So the properties are right here. So there's a property section for each one of these for the most part. And it tells you, you know, the properties are essentially uh, the HTML attributes that you can apply to the component, the custom HTML component. So for instance, uh, <clears throat> sorry, my throat is like getting all jacked up. It's dry. Um, so if we want to say, to, for instance, we want to set um, to true disable the button, disabled. All right. Well, first, you can look up here to see if they show you that, which I'm sure they do. Let's control F to disabled. Right here. Yes, they do. So if you want this, you can show the source. But also, you can just put in disabled right here in the attribute. So for instance, if we put in disabled, we're going to see now that our button will be disabled. All right. So that's what the the uh, the properties here are for. Now, of course, some of them I uh, will show you that there's a type of uh, Boolean. Some will accept a string. So like href equals whatever um, loading uh, or, or name. You can set an optional name for this. But there are other things outside of properties for some of these uh, components. Uh, we have events, and I'll show you how to tie into an event on one of these uh, different components. There's also methods. Like, for instance, you can remove the focus or set the focus for this comp particular component. Uh, we have slots here, and what's something called CSS parts, which we'll get to as well. So I'm going to show you. I uh, just another example of one of these elements here. Um, we'll do the uh, the switch element. All right. So if we come down here, uh, over here rather, we're going to put in SL switch. And inside of here, we're just going to say switch. All right. So we have our switch. Very exciting. And I'm going to show you a little bit about CSS customization for this. So one thing here, uh, outside of Switch, there are basically, uh, you can change any of the, you can change the main color scheme that's associated with all of these components. All right, and the way you do that, we'll come out here. We're going to say root, and we're going to put in SL color primary hue. And these are basically numerical values. And then SL, oops, not SOL, sorry, color primary saturation. We can say like uh, 90%. And what happens is, is it will change for all of these. So notice how it has this color right here. It's like an orange. If we change this to like 50, 40 or something, we'll see it will go into a different hue. into like more of like a yellowish orange. Uh, so that's a really handy way to be able to on the fly, you know, change up uh, the CSS for that. And by the way, we can go to customizing and this will show you that section that I just showed you there for changing um, the hue and the saturation. Uh, 
And then also we have what are called component parts. All right, so most of these uh, components have parts associated with them. So if we go to our switch, where's our switch right there. All right, so we can see we have our properties, events, methods, slots, CSS parts. All right, so this is really cool the way this works. Basically, each component has uh, these parts which allow you to use CSS properties to customize them specifically at the component level. So we have a base, we have a control, we have a label, and we have a thumb, all right? The, the switch position indicator. The way you use this is we're going to, you could give this a class if you wanted to, or we'll just, because we only have one, we're just gonna use the HTML elements name as the selector itself. And what we can do is we put in the part function here and we put in the name of the part. So there is four different parts for this one. This one will say base and we can add any property now to this. So for instance, if we want to give it like a custom background color around uh, the, the switch itself, we can do background and we'll just say gray for now. And you'll see that this now will turn, sorry, gray. So it's just uh, the, basically the, the base part uh, it just encapsulates the whole area of the switch container itself. Um, so to make that look a little bit better, I'm going to go ahead and off screen, I will paste in uh, you know, something that's more consistent with a real world uh, use case. So I'll give it these properties instead. And we'll see how much better it looks right here. Very, very cool stuff. Um, <clears throat> now, just to show you further, we can do like the thumb. I, I didn't mess with this, but we'll see what happens when we take this and we change the part from base to thumb. And I don't know, we'll just do background green. It's gonna look but ugly, but that's okay. There you go. That's the actual thumb right here. And so we can add any CSS property to our heart's desire with this, which really allows us to, to, to gain, um, you know, a really high level control over these external components. All right, so next up, let's see how we could tie into like events, for instance, in these components. Um, so now let's go ahead and use uh, a rating. So the rating right here, if I find it, there we go, is right here. So it's like your typical five-star rating and it actually works, you click it and it has logic applied to it down here because we have events. So we can listen to these events that are designated for each of these HTML components. So, or these web components rather. Um, so this one has an event called SL change. And this is emitted when the ratings value changes. All right, so how do we actually tie into that? Because obviously if we're using a, a web component like this that's interactive, we want a way to capture the, the interactivity or any data that's coming from it. For instance, in this case, if somebody clicks on four stars, how would you know that they clicked on four stars. All right, so what we'll do, let's create this real quick. So SL switch, all right, so oh, SL rating rather is looking at the wrong area. Come on, Gary, so unprofessional. All right, so SL rating. So just by default, you can see when we specify this, we're going to have right here, the default component already working at least you know, on, on the front end level, but we're not actually communicating anything with it. Like if we go to our dev inspector, control shift I, we'll see nothing happens. That's, that's up to us to tie into that event and listen to that event when it happens. All right, so let's do that. We'll go ahead and we'll put a script tag here. And the first thing we need to, do, to need to do is to get access to this SL rating right here. So what we're gonna do is define a const here SL rating equals document dot query selector and the query selector is the query's SL rating right here. And then SL rating, we do an add event listener. Now, of course, this would be uh, a different approach if you were using React or Vue or anything like that, but here's the vanilla JavaScript way. We're gonna do SL change And then we basically can console log E. 
Now, and that's not going to give us the actual rating, but I wanted to show you this specifically. So if we click this now, we see this comes out over here, and it happens every time. So I'm going to make this big just so everybody can read it. So it passes along a bunch of information that we could potentially tie into uh, all these different properties here. So uh, what we want is the target, no, the source element rather. And we come all the way down here and we see something called value three. So what we can do is we can put E source element dot value. Now, <laughs> I shouldn't have minimized that. We could see if we click this, it's four, three, five, two, etc. All right, so what's really cool also about the ratings uh, is that we can actually give them precision. So if we want fine precision, like three and a half stars, again, we just use the attributes here. Um, so we could put precision, precision as 0.5, and that should also reflect itself in the value that's being emitted down here. So precision 0.5, we'll check out the result. See, you can see they're half, uh, halfway, 3.5, 4, 5, 4.5, awesome, awesome stuff. And so basically, uh, we'll show one more uh, example here, and this time I'm just going to copy from this source just to show that you know these, I, uh, these components are you can embed components within comp components. All right. So for instance, if we copy all this right here, and then we paste this example. Oops, let me leave that stuff there. Get rid of that. We could see that we have an SL card here and it ends right here. And then we also have an SL button. So that's a component within a component and there's also a rating here as well. And then also notice how it says slot, footer, all right, so think of these as kind of like just like template markers um, for, that are designated in um, each of the components. So you can see how this works. Works just fine. And so with card, we can see there are, I think, four different slots. We have default, which is the card's body. We have footer, header, and image. So that's how the slots essentially work. It's pretty straightforward. Um, one thing we didn't really cover yet, which I'll do finally, is the CSS custom uh, properties. So, of course, we have parts down here, but we also have CSS custom properties um, that allow you to um, adjust the uh, different elements of, you know, the, the, uh, the component, essentially. Sorry, I'm being slow. Um, so border color, color. How would you use this to change the border color? So this is going to change the card's border. Uh, border color, including borders that occur inside the card as well. So um, we'll take the CSS custom property called border color. And what we can do is go to our main CSS. So we know this is called SL card. We can just reference uh, SL card itself, or we can give it a class and do it that way. And border color, we'll just say green. And now we'll see it's going to look really ugly, by the way. I just wanted to demonstrate that it will work. And there we have our very ugly green border. And so that way you can use custom properties, of course, to modify the different areas, uh, the border radius, for instance, the card edges. Let's, let's do that just for the fun of it, just because I like messing around with this stuff. Border radius, um, 2M units. I don't know. Let's see what happens. All right, there you go. And now it's it's rounded and works very, very well. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed that. You learned something new. Let me know if you enjoyed it. And let me also know if you want to see more web component content on my channel. As always, subscribe. I'll see you soon. Goodbye. Hey.